I do rise at the moment to oppose this particular bill. And I do so because it really is sending out a very mixed message, a contradictory message, and particularly as it is involved and targets some of our smaller businesses, those that are not perceived as the most profitable, uh, but oftentimes function on a small margin. Um, it has been said that Connecticut is trying to follow a different path, a road less traveled in the United States, and it certainly seems to be because, as many have mentioned, we're facing one of our, our taxpayers are facing one of the highest tax increases in its history. We're also spending more as other states are spending less. And that uh, we have some taxes that are going to be retroactive, which is going to be quite a jolt to folks coming in August uh, when um, they get a, um, a, a uh, paycheck that might be deducted for uh, income taxes that have been accruing for the last uh, six or eight months, as well as um, a death tax that is retroactive. This is a concern because there are parts of this bill, uh, first of all, that, that exempts a number of individuals, day and temporary workers, but yet even though they exempt them, including those that work uh, as performed by a, an employment agency or temporary help, but yet it, from what I understand, and I could be certainly corrected uh, by the chair of the Labor Committee, that it does count towards a threshold of 50 employees, if I listen to the previous remarks. Additionally, in this bill, there is a clause in there that does give one pause, and it's about the retaliatory personnel actions that are included in this for businesses, again, that have very low margins, are on a threshold, and the very last thing they could need is probably legal expenses of things they may have to fight uh, where they may be in the right, but the cost of litigation uh, could be higher than maybe some of the fines that are in here. As I understand it, this bill allows a person to accrue one paid sick day for every one paid uh, sick day for every 40 hours worked, but that it does start to accrue starting at only 17 days on the job, which seems pretty extraordinary, if I'm not mistaken. That's 680th hours of employment. So just working for 17 days, a little more than two weeks, and you start to accrue. Uh, it is also interesting, and the reason why I believe that this is contradictory, because uh, in stating that this bill does not, uh, is, will not be costly, will not, many have mentioned that there's quite a number of exclusions in this bill, things like the manufacturing industry. If it didn't provide a higher cost to doing business in Connecticut, we wouldn't be excluding them. It does exclude also a number of nonprofits, big brothers, big sisters. Boy Scouts of America, Girl Scouts of America, and it also excludes the Red Cross. So it appears that both for nonprofits that certainly are on a low margin and have a lower cost structure, it also impacts the manufacturing industry of our state. What some may not realize, that these low profit, low margin individuals that work at those kind of businesses we're talking about we should highlight some of them for people. We're talking about community and social service specialists, couriers and messengers, data entry and information processing workers. Now they could be in almost any business. Desktop publishers, office clerks, machine operators, receptionists, social and human services assistants, ambulance drivers, bakers, barbers, hairdressers, and stylish, an industry that we're going to add a new state, uh, state sales tax on this year. Bartenders, building bus drivers, cooks, dental hygienists, food and counter workers, janitors and cleaners, hotel and motel clerks, medical assistants. The list goes on. Security guards, social workers, taxi cab drivers, tellers, therapists, waitresses, and, and waiters. And one of the areas that I'm particularly concerned about is the area of restaurants. I know individuals have carved out manufacturers, they've carved out nonprofits, but one of my concerns, uh, because in my seven town district, I must have at least nine diners. And I like to visit them as often as I can. And when I do so, I ask them, how's business? How's this economy, the recession affecting you? And one of the most popular in my district uh, and the one most heavily used by our area, uh, 
tells me that things just haven't gotten back to normal yet. Things are on the margin. And when I explained this bill to that person, they were incomprehensible, very concerned, and as was stated uh, by the good senator, that 15 out of the 15 that she discussed this bill with already give some sort of paid sick leave, or at least they, they don't dock their pay. The issue then is about the flexibility you're eliminating with this bill, the flexibility for those type of businesses, where it's a hairdresser or a diner, to be able to cut back costs when they can because of extraordinary circumstances like the con of economy that we have. So when we, when we reduce this flexibility and why putting this in statute is so difficult, even though we know the vast majority of people with a business, and we've had small businesses ourselves, where we often cut our own pay or didn't take any so the employees could continue to be paid, and, and never did anyone get docked because they had to stay home because they were sick or had a child that was sick. But if you remove that flexibility and then also add the component of retaliatory language in here, you really are causing um, a severe problem for this area, this group of people. And I, I would think that our diners and restaurants should also be excluded as well. Hopefully we'll be talking about that a little further down the road. But um, again, um, I'm very concerned about the message this is setting. I don't think it'll become a trend in the rest of the country because I think that the case is clearly, can be clearly made, that it is the wrong direction we're going. We don't want to continue to be perceived as business unfriendly, which we are, and it is a reputation uh, that we've gained, not because any of us have mentioned it on the floor of the Senate or the House, it is because that those uh, that, that review that industry are in that industry, that counsel that industry, many attorneys in my district that do business with startup companies that counsel them on what's the best business model, where they should be located, are telling them not to come here. And it's not just because of our increasingly high taxes, but it's the kind of bills that are constantly being proposed here on the floor in, this, in the House. The sentiment, the, the, the atmosphere of whether we're promoting something that would be an advantage to businesses or bills like this that always it's well-intentioned and may sound compassionate, but the end of the day, it really ties the hands of businesses, makes it less flexible. And that flexibility is very important, particularly with very low margin businesses that could be on the edge.